always get happy when it comes back and everything works well. <laughs> so welcome everybody back to my um, fun journey through all NFL fans to figure out what they're feeling about their team, where they're at, just all things NFL. And so I would I will let my next guest introduce himself. And then we will start talking about all things Giants and learn a little bit about what they have going on up north. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, um, I'm Big Pat Sports Talk. Welcome to Big Pat Sports Talk is my channel. I'm a Giants channel. Um, been doing this strongly for like the past three years. We've been going to the past drafts. So I'm um, everything Giants, anything you want to know about the Giants, or what we're going through. I, I, uh everybody wants to talk about daniel jones everything it's 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 crazy especially on the, in the twitter sphere that's all they want to talk about is daniel jones and it's weird but yeah as you can see i'm a new york giants fan and let's talk some giants i guess yeah how long have you been a giants fan uh my whole life since i was oh, about okay. four or five years old with my uncle uh i was watching the bears game they was playing against the giants and i saw lawrence taylor so Ah, and it's I so wanted to funny. be different. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny how we all have like similar like stories that what made us a fan. Well, mm -hmm. that's awesome. So let's just talk about the elephant in the room. Um, let's talk about Daniel Jones. What okay. what are are you guys like? Are you split as a fan base? Um, are you just do you all just have different opinions on what should happen to Daniel Jones? Do you love him? Like what is happening with the fan base in Daniel Jones? Okay, see. Now, the fan base is pretty much split. It's like it's like splitting three. It's the people okay. that extremely hate Daniel Jones, and then it's the people that extremely defend Daniel Jones, and then it's the people that are logical thinkers like how I am. It's just, it's just split down the middle and just see what happens because everybody – that hates Daniel Jones says that oh he sucks he should be able to elevate the team and do all this and do all that with no offensive line, no offensive weapons as far as the number one receiver goes. And then when I ask people, okay, what quarterback in NFL history has <laughs> ever been super successful with the bottom ranked offensive line and bottom ranked weapons for? multiple years just his whole career which quarterback has done it nobody answers the question because you can't <laughs> yeah no do you think there's this weird thing with um different types of fans because i feel like as you start watching football like first the first thing you see in football is like the quarterback and like the flash player so running mm -hmm. back if somebody flashes off defensive line like you all, there's certain things that get you to pay attention. And then as you learn more about football, you realize like how important the offensive line is and how everything works together as a system. Do mm -hmm. you feel like a lot of fans like don't know the in depths of football? So they just race to blame the guy that gets the ball more often than not. Yeah, they don't they don't know exactly what football is really about. And uh that's the reason why the NFL hypes up the quarterback is it's for the fan that really doesn't pay attention to the game. They just look at the game. They don't really want to study the game. Huh. But the thing that kills me is the people that talk in absolutes and have no clue what the game is really about. Because, yeah, the quarterback is the most important position, but it's also the most dependent. Right. Right. Yeah, because, that's a good point. Yeah, because if the offensive line don't block, he can't get the ball off. If the receivers ain't running routes getting open, he can't get the ball off. Even if he could get the ball off and the receivers can't catch, guess what? It's still incomplete. He needs everybody to do their job so he can do it. That's why I love the game of football because it's like chess. Huh? I just wrote that down, by the way, that the quarterback is the most dependent position because that's a better way to explain it. Um, compared to the way I've explained it to some mm -hmm. people. So, okay. So speaking of the quarterback, um, we talked about this a little bit before. Um, I am on the Colorado bandwagon and hoping okay. to figure it out. Um, so there's been talks about if Daniel Jones doesn't pan out, what does that mean? Like, could Shador go to New York? What are your thoughts? Um, just preliminary thoughts. Obviously, a whole college season still needs to be played. There's a thousand things that can happen before then. But I would love to know what your thoughts are on the potential of Shador becoming a New York Giant. Um, there's absolutely a chance uh, he can become a New York Giant because if Daniel Jones bombs this year, it, it really doesn't matter after this year. Even if 
the offensive line gets hurt again or anything and he doesn't play well, they're going to move on from Daniel Jones after this year because they have a out after his contract. So out, out of his contract after the second year, which is this year. So they're going to let him go and save that money. Oh, okay. I didn't know he had an out of the second year. I thought it was the third year. I must have must have read the contract. Yeah. Oh, okay. So insert talks of Shador going to the Giants if it doesn't work out this year. <laughs> yeah, if, it, if, if Shador comes to the Giants, I believe the fan base, especially on Twitter, would be elated. Yeah. Um, he has a certain swagger to himself now. Me personally, I I like the swagger that that Shadur has, but it could rub some people the wrong way when he does get to the league. Yep, and it is basically just people that don't want to understand him or people that just hate him about what he has. Um, because he's he has nil deals that's better than <laughs> most NFL <laughs> players. So exactly. Um, uh just ba- but based on the skill set, I wouldn't mind it at all. Okay. Uh, I think he has a, more than enough arm strength uh, to get to play in the Meadowlands. Um, he's training with Tom Brady. And just to be honest with you, they're not going to let Deion's son fail. So I know wherever he goes, Deion Shadour is going to have a have a good career. It just depends on who drafts him. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Um, so let's talk about free agency. Um, I know, like, for some reason, after I talked to you a little bit, you know how these all these systems are connected? Mm-hmm. I started getting um, Saquon Barkley information, and I guess the fan base is not very happy with him that he went. Maybe it's not that he left. It's that he went to the Eagles, I'm assuming, is the whole thing. Um, yeah. So, Can't okay. wait to play him. Okay, Can't wait so to play him. Okay, so that's a so that's a real thing. It wasn't just like Twitter being weird and sending me things that aren't actually being talked about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Barkley, I'm not mad that he left. It's just the way that he did it. It's like he act like the New York Giants didn't offer him a contract that was actually a little bit better than what the Eagles did. Um... The running back market dried up. And so the Giants offered you uh, like four to five contracts and you kept refusing. So what do you expect them to do? You expect them to keep begging you to come back? No. And I think you wanted to go to Philly the whole time, which is cool. Just be truthful about it. Don't try to play like you're the victim and that woe is me. And then you go around with the Eagles and you start, you know, you're starting to act like those act dudes different. now. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> All right. Yeah, as I was say, not only did he go there, now he's acting different. Yeah, he's acting <laughs> like him. I was like, all right, can't wait to play. Let's see what you do out there. That's awesome. What else did you all do in free agency that you're either really excited about or um I'm, e- I'm excited about Joe Shane getting six offensive linemen in a mm. free agency. He really attacked the offensive line as free agency, especially bringing over uh John Runyon, John Runyon Jr. Um, Eagles, he plays dad play with the Eagles. Very good tackle with the Eagles, by the way. Um, uh, Jermaine uh, Illuminor, they brought him over. So our offensive line, if everybody per- plays the way they're supposed to play, we can be a solid O-line. And I just want to see what we can do with a solid O-line. That's yeah. all I want to see. And if, I hate to bring it back to Daniel Jones, but if Daniel Jones can't succeed – and our offensive line, just let the offensive line be ranked 20th, not 32nd. Not, yeah, no, I watched, there was a couple of Giants games I watched um, where I was just like, if he could get one more second, I think uh, against the Bills when you guys played, uh, I think Tyrod Taylor was the quarterback, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just, and then I think what kept happening then is everybody kept getting hurt. So they were like, well, they got to sh- reshuffle the offensive line again. Um, so it just felt like every time I sat down to watch the Giants, some the offensive line just couldn't quite figure it out. And there's always a new guy or new rotation or a new, you know, new something. So I hear you there. Yeah. Dane Jones started one game where it's basically five guards playing. We didn't have a tackle. That's wild. <laughs> but he's That's supposed wild. to go out there and throw Patrick Mahomes numbers out there. <laughs> it's weird, man. Like, you, yeah. You don't know the game of football if you believe the quarterback elevates everybody i i keep asking people this i said okay if the quarterback makes everybody better how does the quarterback make somebody run better routes how does he make the receiver yeah. run better routes 
How does he make the receiver catch the ball? Yeah, he can't. Well, it's interesting. So you're alluding to something that I think happened to Colorado fans this year is because same, right? Our offensive line just wasn't good um, in no quarterback. If you give them oh, negative seconds. Terrible. Yeah. If you give somebody negative seconds to make a play, you're it doesn't right. matter who's back there. Like the play is not going to be made. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I hear you. Um, I also think that sometimes um, a little bit better we don't realize how good a little bit better is. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean you can compete with the top of the top, but it does mean on the games you're supposed to be in competition and you're supposed to like keep it close. You might be able to move the ball. Um, and so that's what I, I'm trying to temper expectations for us because it's not going to go from absolutely despicable to the best. It like, exactly. it's not going to happen. We just need a little bit better. Please. <laughs> yeah. Because really? You, okay. We need way better than that. We need, like, that was bad. <laughs> yeah. Last year, Colorado's line was the NCAA version of our line. Yeah. I'm just yeah. going to be honest with you. Colorado's line was awful last year. But like you just, like you said, just get a little bit better. That's what I'm saying. I'm not expecting an offensive line from going 32nd to number one, but yeah, let's be top 20. Let's be yeah. 22 or 23. And you can see how much of a difference it is because the quarterback position, he makes the situation better. And what I mean by that, he's the facilitator. So if your offensive line is good enough to give him time to facilitate to the receivers, that's when he can make somebody like a Valdez Scantling look better than what he is because he has enough time to get the ball out there to him. He has enough time for Valdez Scantling to get into one of those slow routes he runs and he's able to get him the ball. Yeah. And if he catches it, he looks like a, a superhero. If he doesn't catch it, he's back to zero. Right. So it, it it's weird, man. These people they just don't know the game. Yeah, I think that's it. I think when you insert fantasy football and Madden and yep. betting, I think those three things have been really bad for football because I feel like people don't you're just you're betting on the outcome and looking at the stats, but you're not looking mm -hmm. at like the whole sport and i think that that negatively impacts people's ability to understand football yeah. um that's my personal opinion and i'm standing on it yep. um so speaking <laughs> of receivers um how do you think that you all did in the draft what was your favorite pick and why um and if you don't say malik neighbors i would love to know how malik neighbors is doing because as of this recording rookie mini camp i think you guys had rookie mini camp this week. yeah okay yeah to uh Two days, Friday and Saturday. Um, okay. My favorite pick was um, Malik Neighbors. Um, we did at the Big Blue Crew, Big Blue Crew, Sp Big Blue Crew Sports Network. That's our crew. We go to the drafts and everything. We predicted okay. that for months. Everybody, oh, we're going to take a quarterback. Daniel Jones is dead. Daniel Jones this. I said, man, listen, if they can't get the quarterback they want, which was reported was Drake May, they try to offer the Patriots to farm to get it. I don't really believe it, but really? if it, oh, okay. it, yeah, I don't really believe it, but it is what it is. Yeah. They couldn't get Drake May. So I knew Malik neighbors was going to be the pick because they need a number one receiver there. Yeah. Point blank period. Every quarterback needs a receiver. He can depend on exactly. and he's going to be that guy for Daniel Jones this season. And whoever else is the quarterback going into the future. Um, we actually predicted the first two picks right there at the draft. Uh, there's a video uh, out of us doing it because I knew Tyler like Newbin. From Minnesota, right? Mm-hmm. Tyler okay. Newbin, the safety from Minnesota. We predicted that too. So I love both those picks. I think both those guys are going to be pretty doggone good. But awesome. Malik Neighbors, I can't wait to see him. He's already making one-hand catches and everything. So <laughs> Yeah, I think it'll be get... great. If he can get the ball, right? But just like mm -hmm. any other receiver. You can get the ball. You should be a. You should be great. Mm -hmm. Um. So you said you all went to the draft. You go every year. Or was that something you just did this year? No. Uh. We've been doing it the past two years. We're gonna be going every year. Like I said, just uh follow the Big Blue Crew Sports Network. Uh. Did interviews. Uh. At the draft is on my channel. If you want to check them out. Uh. Did interviews with fans at the draft. I mean, it's dope when you go out there. And we're just getting we're getting better and better and getting more used to it. Yeah. We're gonna get our credentials. You're gonna see us doing interviews with Mel Kipper. Watch, watch what I tell you. 
we, that's awesome. We're gonna get that. I love that. I love when fans get involved in stuff like that and it's not so corporate. I feel like historically, it's always just very stuffy. It's the same guys, the same people doing the same thing. Um, so it's nice to see other people out there um, that are fans of their team that are that like will ask the good questions because <laughs> that's the other thing is like the question asking. Um, is there anybody else in the draft that you were excited to get? Um, and then if you want to, I didn't. I didn't think about this. Um, what's what is the word coming out of rookie mini camp? Was there anything that happened that was stellar? I know you mentioned the one hand catch. I saw that on my Twitter feed. Um, is there anything else coming out that people are talking about? Um, one thing, Andrew Phillips is probably going to be the starter at nickel corner. Okay. Um, the cornerback from Kentucky we drafted in the third round. Um I'm actually very intrigued with our fifth round pick. I don't know if you know him, Tyrone Tracy, running back from um uh, not Minnesota, Purdue. That doesn't ring a bell. This he, he played doesn't... he played receiver and running back. I'm actually intrigued by him. Like okay, I think this guy's gonna be pretty dog good if he gets yeah. if he gets a shot, man. I think he's gonna be hard to take him off the field. Um, but word through training camp. Uh, Andrew Phillips is probably going to be the starter at nickel corner. Um, he's definitely going to get the chance to compete to start. And Cordell Flott is probably going to be the uh, cornerback, too, opposite of Deontay Banks. So okay. we're going to have a very young defensive backfield. Uh, there's going to be two rookies, a second-year man, and a third-year man. So okay, we're we, we going to see uh, what they do. Hopefully do you- our defensive line gets it together. <laughs> Well, then there's that. Um, mm-hmm. Would you say that you all are rebuilding? Would you say that you all are just kind of trying to see what you're doing? Like, what stage do you feel like your team is at right now? All right. There's just three stages of rebuild, and I think we're in the second stage. Waiting okay. to see if we have to go to the third stage, which is replacing the quarterback. Okay. Um, I actually think. If this offensive line blocks, we're going to surprise some people. Okay. Because we have too many weapons on the field now for if the quarterback has time, somebody's going to break open. Yeah. When you I got, agree. yeah, when you got Hyatt speed, Slayton speed, Wanda Robinson's route running, neighbors route running, then you have Theo Johnson out there, uh, the tight end. I really like that pick we picked up in the fourth round from Penn State. Mm. Somebody, somebody's going to get open. Yeah, and just it just depends time. on the yeah, it just depends on the quarterback and seal. Yeah. So I will see if the offensive line blocks. I expect I expect us to make the playoffs again. People forget we made the playoffs the very first year. Yeah. So. Well, that's the th- so okay. I'm gonna be honest. My observation on Daniel Jones is I feel like he has all the intangibles. Like I feel mm-hmm. like when he I feel like he has the intangibles. Like, if I, of course, when I close my eyes, I can think of all the games that, like, I was frustrated. But also, I can remember that a lot of times he was running for his life, um, <laughs> it seemed like. So it's kind of like it's hard for me to say, like, somebody is not good when literally they're running for their lives. That's not what's supposed to happen at that position. Um, so I do remember a time where he was good. And he, you know, and if we put good on a scale, I don't want to say, you know, he was Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow. But I don't want to say he was, you know, the worst. So I think exactly. he, was, he, he was he was fine. So I actually agree with you in seeing seeing him behind an offensive line. It'll be interesting to see what that looks like. Um, so what are your concerns heading into this season? What is something that you're thinking about? Um, there's something in my eye and I cannot see out of it. What is something <laughs> that you're thinking about um, for this season that you're concerned about? Or something that's like top of mind. Obviously, the quarterback is probably one of the things, and I'm assuming offensive line. But is there anything else that you're thinking about that um, heading into this year, you know, you want to bring it up because it's something that's on your mind? Well, besides the obvious, the offensive line, I just want to uh, – one thing about the offensive line, I want to see if Evan Neal progresses at right tackle. Because if Evan Neal doesn't progress at right tackle, we're going to have a bad offensive line again. Because he was brought here to be one of the pillars of the offensive line, opposite okay. of Andrew Thomas. And if that happens, sky's the limit with the offensive line. Because if he's solid and Andrew Thomas is solid, I think our guards are solid this year. Nice. Um, 
Um, let's see. I want to go. I want to. I'm basically gonna name some things that I want to see. Second, I want to see if uh, Darius Slayton can step up and be the number two now that he has a number one on the field, and maybe Malik Neighbors, even though it's his rookie year, he can open up the field a little bit. I want to see if Darius Slayton can propel himself. Um, he's okay. he's been consistent, and I want to see if he can actually crack the thousand yard mark. Where was he at last year? year? Do you know? Seven hundred and fifty. He's always oh, okay. he's always going to be between seven hundred and seven hundred and fifty. That's what he does. He's that's been consistently he doing that. Listen, I mean, that's better than six hundred. Yeah, exactly. Especially um, with people don't know how, how hard that is. Especially mm-hmm. with not having quarterback. Good for him. Okay. Hmm. Um. Hyatt, I want to see him develop more this year. Um. Far as his route running, because if he gets route running down. He's gonna be an issue because he's yeah. too fast. Um, Wondell Robinson, I think he's gonna have a very good year this year because now you open the field up even more for a Wondell, and he knows how to run routes, and he's like a little jitterbug. <laughs> and people already took notice of him last year. Just hopefully he stays healthy. And if he stays healthy, I think he's gonna have a good year, especially if the offensive line blocks. So if you haven't noticed, I think the season is dependent on what this offensive line does. Right, because so. Yeah, and if they block and if Daniel Jones still can't do it, now we know what Daniel Jones is. Yep. Until now, you cannot know what your quarterback is if he has no offensive line and no weapons. There's, there's no way possible you can know what your quarterback is. I agree but, with you. But now, even I don't I don't care if the whole team gets hurt. If he if he doesn't produce this year, he's gone because they're gonna get out of that contract. Yeah, which is not a horrible contract because if he turns out to be the guy, you're getting them for ten million less than what everybody else is get uh, getting paid, like a Jalen Hurts. Like, <laughs> I don't understand what people see in that dude. Like that dude, he has two number one receivers, a number one tight end, the number one ranked offensive line, the number one ranked running game. Of course, he's gonna have a little bit of success, but if that I, dude will put that man, that team will be unstoppable. Yeah, I mean, it's those situations are so tricky because it's like people always say, "Well, if you take him and put him here, then he would be better than him." And it's like, I don't know what these teams have going on behind the scenes, behind the curtains. I don't really know if that's actually true because <laughs> some people could make the argument with if you take Andy Reid away from Patrick Mahomes. That might sound crazy, but like we don't really know, you know. It's like I don't know. Um, Jalen Hurts is an interesting conundrum, though. I, um, I I go back and forth with that with that one. Um, so so I, so, and I know that's a division rival, so I'll back off of that. But let's nah, get to the I've, schedule. Um, okay. I will say I am notorious notoriously on record of saying. I am so tired of seeing the Giants and Cowboys game. Yeah, on, people was on just Monday saying night. that. Like I'm <laughs> yeah. so tired. Um, mainly because I until until the Giants proved to us they can make it a game. Because what is it like eight straight, ten straight? Where the Cowboys, yeah, Cowboys have, have been stomping us. Yeah, bro. so it's like, can we get a different game? So anyway, so I just want to be honest there and say I'm I'm one of those fans that's like not this not this matchup again. Um, but what do you think about you all's schedule? Um, what are some games? As of this recording, the schedule is not out. However, it should be out in just a few days. Um, mm-hmm. What do you think about the schedule just from what you know of, like, who's home, who's away? Um, and who all do you historically struggle with um, besides the Cowboys, obviously? <laughs> the Eagles. We stay, yeah. we stay okay. losing to the Eagles. We find ways to lose to them. Um, I think we play – don't we play Pittsburgh – we play the yes, North. You all play the AFC North. Yeah. AFC Which North. I believe is the toughest division of football. And everybody that listens to all these episodes is going to be annoyed. <laughs> yeah. Me saying that. Uh, yeah. That is one of the toughest divisions in football because you got the Ravens, you got the Steelers, you got uh, the Bengals and the Browns. And yeah. all of them are playoff caliber teams. Yeah. Um, I'm anxious to see what we do against the AFC North Fair. because that's going to be the, some of the best tests against our offensive line. Mm. Um, TJ Watt, all those boys with the Ravens, uh, the Browns, the Browns, especially the Browns. Good Lord. Yeah. Um, so I'm waiting to see what they do against those teams. We can literally go 0-4 against those teams that we don't block. So any team that 
presses our offensive line, that's the team I want to see us play. Okay, fair. So can I ask you, what – so so then Dallas just is winning right now because they're better up front. They're just a better – and then once you're better up front, nothing else matters because you have mm-hmm. more time. You you can get to our quarterback. We don't have any time. Um, as a Giants fan, do you feel like the Cowboys are your biggest rivals or do you feel like that's an NFL-made rivalry? Um, it's definitely a rivalry. I think the biggest rivalry rivalry for us is probably the Eagles, because we just find so that. many stupid ways to lose to those dudes. I don't understand. It's it's weird. I'm so I was so glad we whooped them at the last game of the last season. The Brent Edge on their misery last year. We made them quit. Yeah, they look terrible. They yeah, look terrible. they look awful. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's the Eagles, and then it's the Cowboys. I can't stand either one of them. <laughs> but. Rightfully so. And what yeah. about the what about the what are, the commanders? Is are we the beating commanders... those guys? Okay. We beating those guys over a hundred times. We're the <laughs> Cowboys to them. We keep sweeping the com- commanders. <laughs> so okay. it's got to be you got to win a couple of games for it to be a rivalry. Those dudes stay getting beat. Yeah, it's funny to me how all divisions I'm learning have this thing where um, it seems like the Cowboys can beat you guys. You guys can beat Washington. The Eagles can always beat the Cowboys. It's like this weird thing mm-hmm. where it's like everybody it's weird. Has no matter how good the teams are, no matter doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't it's, matter. It's the same thing. And to be fair, for some of the other fans I'm talking to, we've had this similar conversation within their division. Mm-hmm. Um, and who's beating who and who can't beat who. And I think it's like the Colts, the Jaguars, the Texans. Um, and the Titans have a similar thing where it's like, we can beat them, but we can't ever beat them. And they always beat right. us. And so, it's so. weird, bro. I'm telling you, those it division is. games are weird. That it division is. team could be 0-9, but they'll beat the best team <laughs> yeah. in their division. Like, 100%. Like, what's going on? Yeah. Um, so t- is there anything else that maybe we didn't talk about that you would love people to know about the Giants? Or is there anything else that you're talking about on your channel that, you know, about the Giants that people would be shocked to know? Uh, I'm quite sure the people that, that that follow my channel, hopefully some of you guys, if you're Giants fans, you're watching this, you come to my channel, I do New York Giants full access. Um, I just talk everything New York Giants, and I just give my honest, logical opinion about the team. Like, my channel is strictly logical. It's not media-based. I don't follow trends. If anything, I set them, you know, yeah. so I don't – the whole trend and it's the whole lead in the media is to Weird. say Daniel Jones is the most awful quarterback to ever touch the football field. It's like, there's no way possible you can know that because he's never had an offensive line ranked above 28. And the never? time that he, and no, never this whole career. He's never had an offensive line ranked above 28. And he's never had a number one receiver. And the one time he got some decent coaching, and had the offensive line ranked at 28, he went into the playoffs and won a playoff game. But instead of people giving him credit for that, they say, oh, he beat the Minnesota Vikings. They had the worst defense ever. But you cheered for Josh Allen when he put up numbers against them, and they lost to him. People don't understand. That Vikings team was 13-3 and that year. Yeah. I did not realize how bad his offensive lines have been. How long has the coach been there? This is uh, Dable's third year. So he had two years of Joe Judge, some of the worst coaching that you'll ever see. Yeah. His very his rookie year, he threw 24 touchdowns. People seem to forget that too. With Patrick Shermer is there, then they ripped Patrick Shermer away from him, brought him two years of Joe Judge and Jason Garrett. They totally ruined the kid, made him this conservative. I, I don't know what they is. were doing. I don't know what he that well, and I think that messes with your psyche. Yeah, because he probably doesn't know what he is either. Exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you're you're trying you you had fifteen different people telling you to do fifteen different things. Yeah. Then when he finally gets Dabo his very first year, and they give him just just a little bit of consistent consistency around him, he makes the playoffs. Hmm. So you can't say that he can't do anything. He took us to the playoffs and set history in that Vikings game. But you want to take that away from him 
And then you point to the Eagles game the very next week. We got crushed. Of course we got crushed. That's a team that had over 80 sacks in the, in the season against an offensive Great line that can't block anybody. Yeah, facts. Of course we were going to get crushed that game. Who's, and then who's the, Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to ask, who's the running back? Who's you all starting running back going to be? Uh, Devil Sing Devin Singletary from the Texans. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because mm -hmm. that was that's the other thing. It's like there's like pillars, right, to being a successful quarterback. Usually, uh, the first pillar is usually is not usually is the offensive line. Yeah. Um, because it just is. Um, and then if you make it past that, um, the second thing is usually the running back tight end, depending on who you ask. So if you say running back, great, three is tight end. If you say two is tight end, three is running back. So I was just curious. I know that you mentioned the tight end that you got that you drafted. So I was just curious mm -hmm. to see like who the running back was. Um, and Devin Singletary, and um, we got the running back that we drafted from Tennessee the year before, uh, okay. Eric Gray. And I just think that Tyrone Tracy guy from Purdue, man, he's gonna get snaps, bro. I don't think there's a way you keep him off the field. And what you say? He was a fifth round draft pick. Mm -hmm. Fifth Nothing round draft pick. A lot of skill. Yeah, yeah, and people <laughs> are, are. I I think it's just the Twitter people because it's not a real space. It's just a bunch of people wanting to be important, and re they really don't know the game. But talking absolutes like they do it is is mind boggling. But yeah. They were crapping on him because he's 24 years old coming out of college. Because you know, a lot of those kids are getting like six years in college what? now. Oh, can crazy. I ask you why do people act like that's a big deal? I feel like that's a manufactured big deal. Like because it, it it's because let's say by his second contract he will at least be 28 years old. So if you get 10 good years out of him, he will only be 34. You know, right, so what's wrong with that? People, it's because people play Madden and they get to oh, draft people that are 19 and 20 coming out of the league and they get to play 20 years at a 99 rate. Like, yeah, you're it's, right, you're it's, right. it's weird. And I don't, like, play, I don't play Madden, so I can't. The other thing is, too, it's like, yes, he might be 24, but like 2020 was a laugh, was laughable. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he might be older, which I think is kind of better becoming a pro, being better, being more focused. I don't know. I just I don't see that as a bad thing. So it sounds like a manufactured problem that people have used as a talking point, and now people just use it because I don't I don't see what the big deal is. Yeah, people at like 25, 26 is old in the NFL. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is, man. I hopefully I hope he goes out there and does his thing. Like I said, you can get at least a good 10 good years out of him. That's and that's phenomenal. That's fine. That's <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah. You you lucky to get three years out of people right. in the NFL. So yeah, they act like year, this is a normal nine to five or something. Right. By year by year two or three, we're kind of going, uh oh, is, is he gonna make it? Like he's right. not developed. Like is has <laughs> he hit what's his is that his ceiling? Like mm -hmm. anyways, okay. I I just was curious because I feel like I've started hearing people say that a lot more. And I'm just like, I don't understand the I don't get it. I don't understand the argument. I don't think there is an argument. I think they're just trying to make something up. Um, again, we're sitting at home talking about people that are in positions that we could only dream of being in, exactly. Um, which is another issue. Um, awesome. Well, that was the, uh, the only questions I had. Um, I'll open it up for you. I know you've said a couple of times where people can find you. Um, mm -hmm. but thank you for like letting me talk to you. I know it was kind of random, me randomly reaching out to you, um, and being like, Hey, I have this idea. Like, do you want to hey, be a part of it? That was so, cool, man. I yes. felt special. I'm like, yes. hey, I was like, Hey, someone wants to interview me. It's pretty cool. I know. I know some people are always like, uh, who are you? What are you doing? And I'm like, no, I promise it's, it's like fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fun. Um, so I appreciate you just like reaching back out and setting this up and making this happen. But, um, anything else you want to say? Um, I'm sure people that are going to watch this that maybe haven't seen your channel yet. Um, so they can head on over and see a lot more giants, um, content, Mm -hmm. um, I watched a couple of videos just to make sure, like, I try to got, get people that like knew what they were talking about. Cause you, you, know, <laughs> what I, you know what I'm saying? Um, you, you, you get me exactly. um, because there are some people where I was like, yeah, no, uh, uh, this isn't, yeah, this isn't football talk. <laughs> this is like, this is what I read off the internet. So I think it must be true talk. I don't want that. Exactly. Um, so anything else you'd love to share anything about, um, anything really? Oh <laughs> um, man. Um, just 
Glad uh, that you asked me to do the interview. Like I said, you can find me on Big Pat Sports Talk. You just type in Big Pat Sports, and I'll pop up. Um, part of my uh, the Big Blue Crew, uh, you can tell them, go to Unpopular Opinion Sports, uh, G Nation Inside Sports, Coach Ed Glad in his wonderful world of sports, and uh, Wales to New Jersey. Uh, we're we're officially the Big Blue Crew. We're going to be starting the Big Blue Crew Sports Network uh, here soon, so be on the lookout for that. Um, other than that, man, I, I had a great interview. I don't know who's your team. My team is the Steelers. Oh, you look yeah. like a Steeler. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take that as a I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah. Well, how you feel uh, about your still? I think, uh, I think yeah, you guys no, gonna do pretty good. Yeah. You, so I always say, like, the Steelers fans are privileged um, because we just we just are. We've had the same coach. Um, usually, we play solid football. Um, I always say we usually don't, we usually do one or two things very well. And then everything else, we're just pretty stable. Mm -hmm. um, in this new era of football, we usually have a very solid defensive line. Um, and we usually have a very solid defense. Um, and then we usually always have great wide receivers. Now, quarterback, you know, we're kind of grasping yeah, at straws looks right here. there. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, but, but we have, I always say we also play the toughest division of football. So a lot of times like we go into a season and we're like, okay, we're going to be good this year. And then we're not very good, but then we play teams outside of our division and we're like, oh, maybe we are pretty good. So it's always like this weird thing where it's hey, like, listen, I don't know how that man does it, <laughs> but Mike Tomlin seems to find you guys always right there in the, I don't care how bad y'all look. <laughs> At the end of the season, it's always if this happens, Pittsburgh is going to get in the what, like what the hell? Listen, Those dudes we were know. left with dead like five weeks ago. How are they back? We don't know either. We don't know. It's crazy, man. <laughs> if that dude is not a Hall of Fame coach, man, I'm gonna be pissed. Yeah, because and I he... think. But so okay, I'm gonna tell you like one of my rules of football where I feel like success is measured, but we often don't measure it here. Um, I, it's the second, it's the second string, third string. It's how you build your team. I think we can all agree that if you have good first string guys and they're, your first string guys are better than the next team's first string guys, you should win games. I think we can all mm -hmm. agree with that. I think what people don't pay attention to are the things that happen after those guys. And I think that's where Mike Tomlin excels is finding a diamond in a rough. Like I watch day two and day three of the draft for my team harder than I watched day one because mm -hmm. day one is supposed to do what day one is supposed to do. I, I, you know I what I'm knew, saying? I knew I did this interview. <laughs> I like you. You really go into the game. Yeah. Because and the so, depth of your draft is the nucleus of your team. Exactly. And that's what Mike Tomlin, it's not sexy. It's not pretty. Um, it doesn't show up necessarily on the scoreboard, but if you ever look at the end of the season, the guys that we have playing great football are guys that nobody was talking about at the beginning of the season because those are the, the they came in and did what they needed to do. So, um, so that's why as a Steelers fan, I always say I'm pretty privileged because I watch those guys very closely. Um, and then Tomlin does a great job getting people to believe. I don't know. I don't know. Like, obviously, I don't know I'm what not that on the man does. Build. Yeah, I've heard a ton of things from former players, um, from people I know that have played in the NFL that heard about him. Like, I've heard all the things. Um, and even the players will come out and be like, that's my coach, Coach T, Coach T. So he's doing something right. Um, I'm telling it's, it's so weird, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> every year. It's like the, the Pittsburgh Steelers are two and four. I'm like, oh, yeah, they finally dead this year. <laughs> and all of a sudden, okay, it's six and six. Okay, uh, how did they get to nine and seven? How did they get to ten and seven? Yeah, and it's like they beat some really good teams. <laughs> like mm -hmm. it's like it's crazy. I, I love that coach, y'all, man. Pause. But Tomlin, that's a that's a head coach for real. Yeah, he gets the best out of y'all players every year. Yeah, it every doesn't year. matter who it is. He's gonna get the best <laughs> out of them. Yeah, I always say every year. To be honest, every year as fans, we're like. This is this might be the year, right? Like this might be the year we have a losing season, just because it hasn't happened in 
if you look at anything in life, it will tell you that it is bound to happen at least one year, right? Because that's what you think is supposed to happen. Um, hasn't happened yet. So, you know. Like, I'm telling you, that dude, that dude's <laughs> nice, man. And he's nice with it. Yeah. But well, anyway, so I appreciate you. Um, thanks for asking about my fandom. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully this won't be the last time um, we have conversation. Maybe we'll do something the week that our teams play each other because then we'll have a good understanding of like who we are, what we're doing. Um, and I like to keep it real because if we're trash and we, we're not good at something, I'm going to be like, listen, <laughs> I hope to God we don't try to run on the right side because that has, you know what I mean? So like I, I enjoy good football dialogue. Um Hey, it's listen, <laughs> we're, we're during the season. We go live just about every night here at the Big Blue Crew Sports Network. You're right. more than welcome to come in and talk some football with us, man. You definitely can come and talk some football. You understand yeah. the nuances of the game. So you're more than welcome to come at any time. It's flawless. S send me a link and I will okay. be there. I will show up and I will talk. Um, I like I like football talk. So let's do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, send me send me your Twitter. So Perfect. because when we go live, I can send the link to your Twitter. It's very easy. You just click the Twitter and go and go say you come on and you can talk some noise. Awesome. I love that. Well, thank you again. And like I said, hopefully we'll chat again during the season when both of our teams have winning records and we're battling for something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, if our offensive line blocks, I think we got a heck of a chance to beat you guys, especially with you guys it. secondary. But yeah, well, you do have a man named TJ Watts, so it is yeah. what it is. Cool. Awesome. I'll talk to you soon. All right. All Thank right, you. Thanks.